Hi, this is Greg with StepCraft Support. In this video, we'll be installing and setting up the automatic tool changer. The first step, we're at the back left of the machine by our Y limit switch. We're going to take our two M6 nuts, slide them in the first channel. We're going to skip one channel and slide them in the third channel. Now from here, the manual recommends you're going to want to space 38 millimeters or about an inch and a half from the back of the machine. So I have my caliper here. I'm going to make a little mark here on each channel. And this is where we're going to want to place our M6 nuts. Now from here, all we do is screw our towers into the M6 nuts. Make sure your two towers here are securely tightened down because we're not going to want those to move once we place them. So these two are tight. Now our tool holder is going to be a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench. Now these are snug here, They're not going anywhere. If you wanted to add a second tool rack, it would be the fourth and the sixth on your T-slot here. Now we're going to physically install the ATC unit to the HF500. We're going to want to find our push to connect air pump on the ATC. This is an eight millimeter that you can unscrew. We have our locking pin. And we're going to want to kind of line up the inside of the locking pin. There should be a hole that you see. The locking pin inserts and threads freely, and now you're not able to turn the ATC. The next step is to thread the ATC onto the HF500 spindle. We've removed our collet. Place the locking pin on the spindle by hand. Keep threading until the ATC is snug, just about hand tight with the HF500. I like to line up my locking pin so it's just to the side of the air nozzle on the HF500. If you have a newer model HF500, this air nozzle will not be there. Release the locking pin. and tighten the outer ring. Remove your locking pin. Reinsert your push to connect. And now your ATC is connected to your HF500 spindle. Now we're going to connect our ATC to the ATC control box. We have our HF500 with ATC installed, our six millimeter hose, one serial cable, a six millimeter push to connect, our Stepcraft switch box, our HF500 power supply, and one more serial cable. 
Our first step will be to cut the six millimeter hose into two desired lengths. So here, I'm gonna cut this in half. And now we have two equal length six millimeter hoses. Our first hose, we're gonna to connect to our six millimeter push to connect. All we have to do here is press it until it won't go any further. And now it's locked in here. Now this is gonna to connect to our air compressor fitting, which we have here. This piece here, you'll need to find for your specific air compressor at any local hardware store. So we have ours here, and this is simply threads on here. You'll want to tighten these with wrenches to make sure there's no air. And that's our first hose. The other end of our first hose is going to be connected to the in push to connect on the back of the switch box. Now this is locked in here. Our second hose is going to be connected to the out push to connect on the switch box. This is locked in. The other end of our second hose is going to be inserted into the push to connect on the ATC. That's locked in. The black cable from your HF500 is going to go into the back of the HF500 power supply. Now the first serial cable is going to go out of the HF500 power supply. And into the first port here, all the way to your right, which is going to be your milling spindle. The second serial cable is going to come out of our StepCraft 3D system and into the back of our StepCraft machine. It's important to make sure that all your serial cables are screwed in and tightened so there's no loss of connection. The other end of our second serial cable goes right to the back of your machine. So here we have our UC100 power supply serial cable, and tooling sensor. The next thing we're going to do is take our calibration pin and our SK-10 tool holder and insert the calibration pin into the tool holder. We're going to tighten this up with two 10 millimeter wrenches. Now that we have our SK-10 and the calibration pin set up, we can put this in the HF500 spindle with the tool changer. And to do that, we're going to press the tool change button. And we should hear a little burst of air. So with the SK10 in the tool changer, we'll press the tool change. And now this is securely in here. Now the next thing we have to do before we begin this process is to make sure we home the machine. So we're going to home all. Now that the machine is homed, we're able to begin this alignment process. To start, we're going to move the machine into position. Now it doesn't matter where you move this here, this is just going to be our start position. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to get this calibration pin 
into the tool holder. So you can see on the tool holder, there's two different levels of calibration. We're going to start with the first level. Now that slides nicely in and out with no resistance. So now we're going to go to the next level. Now there's a little bit of resistance there. But that's what we're looking for, just like that. Now we want to make sure that we put the Z height all the way down so it's touching the top of the tool holder. Now this is the correct position for your first tool holder. So what we want to do here is make sure that we're in machine coordinates. You can do this by clicking here. What we want to do now is take note of our X, Y, and Z coordinates. We have our machine coordinates here. And we're going to want to take note of the X. So the X is 574.20. We'll write that down in our chart in our manual. Our Y coordinate is 836.39. And our Z coordinate is negative 69.79. Now that we have those coordinates written down in our chart, we're going to move on to tool holder number two. I have our SK10 positioned here, so I'll move this over. Now this is the same process we just did for the first tool holder. Pull back our first calibration. No resistance there. We'll move down to our second level of calibration. Now if you start to see the tool rack bend like that, you want to back it off a little bit and readjust. Now I don't want any bend in the tool rack when we're adjusting our Z height, so just till it touches the top, right about there. And this is going to be the, the position for tool holder number two. Now we're going to repeat these coordinates into our table for the second tool number. X is 549. Y is 835.44. And the Z height should remain the same from the first tool position. So that's not something we're worried about here. Now from here, you'll repeat through tools three through five and take the coordinates of those. Now that we have our table filled out for tools one through five, we're going to go into our macro files. So we're going to go down to documents, our C drive, UCCNC folder, profiles. And the profile we're using here is the 3D Touch Probe profile. So we're going to want to go into here. And our M6 file is what we're looking for here. So we'll pull that up. Now here's our automatic tool changer macro. From here, we want to look at our StepCraft tool holders, one through five. This would be, if you have another rack, this would be tool six through 10. So we want to enter our coordinates in here from the table that we previously made. Here, we can enter our X and Y coordinates for each tool number. So I'm going to start with tool one. 
and looking at my table that we previously made, I'm going to enter the coordinates 574.20. Now this is your tool 1x. We're going to move on to our tool 1y. Again, from the table we made, it is 836.39. Now this is the x and y coordinates for our tool number 1. For our z coordinates, we're going to want to come down to here. And we have our z written down here as negative 69.79. You'll notice in your manual, they ask you to add a negative 20 to that. So a negative 20 plus negative 69.79 is negative 89.79. There's an extra negative there. And this is where we're going to add our z height. And this is going to be the same for all tools. So there's going to be two spots, your z tool release and your z tool pickup. So we'll put that same value in there. These values here are your offsets, which are already entered and should be negative 20 and negative 15. These will remain the same. So we're going to go back in and fill out the rest of the table for each tool, tools 2 through 5. The negative 20 in the manual is the difference from your calibrating pin to where the tool holder will actually sit in the rack. And this is why you want to add negative 20 to your Z height. Now that tools 1 through 5 have been entered in our M6 macro file, we'll check just to make sure everything's okay. What you'll notice is that from tool 1 to tool 2 on the x values, it will go down 25 millimeters. So each time it steps down 25 millimeters. Now the y values will remain the same consistently throughout each tool, as well as the x values. Now that we're satisfied with our table, We'll go in here. We will save our M6 file. Save it one more time just to be sure. We can close that out now. And we'll open up UCCNC. Now that we're satisfied with our M6 macro, we can go into UCCNC and test to make sure that we entered everything correctly. So to do this, there's two ways you can do this. If you're using our orange screen set, which is available on our website, this is the 3D touch probe screen set. There is an M3 macro which will ask you which tool number. It's going to ask you which tool number you want to use and we can test from here. Um, I'm going to show the other way so we're just going to enter zero here. Now the other way you can do it is find your MDI dialog box down here. We're going to click in here and we're going to run our macro that we just created. So M6 and whichever tool we're trying to change, we're going to type that. So T for tool, and we'll start with the first tool. So it's M6T1. And we'll notice here first that we have tool 0 in here, so there's not a tool already in there. We'll go M6T1, enter. No tool in the chuck. Make sure there's no tool in the chuck. Now before I do this, I always want to make sure that um, near the emergency stop button or the cycle stop, just in case we entered anything incorrectly, we don't want our tool rack to be smashed into. So we'll make sure we have access to an emergency stop. No tool and chuck. Now the machine executed the first tool change. Now we can see we have tool number one in here. What we're going to do is load into tool number two. So again, we'll execute our M6, but this time we'll go into the second tool, T2. Now the macro already knows that tool one is in here, so it will go back, it will insert tool one into its position, and then pick up tool two and return to the position. So we'll enter. Now it's returning the first tool.
And now we have tool number two. Now that we have tool number two, we're going to show you how the M3 works. And we're going to go pick up tool number three. Now this will first return the current tool, tool number two, and then it'll pick up tool number three. So as you can see, tool 3 is ready. The M3 macro essentially replaces your code for the M6, T1, T2. Now that tools 1, 2, and 3 have been successfully picked up, we're going to move our tools in the rack here and test tools 4 and 5 to make sure they're working properly. So we'll just slide these over. Now we do have tool number 3 currently in there. Select M3. Test tool number four. Tool number four was a success. We'll try one more, and we'll do it this way for tool number five. M6, T5, enter. Now tools 1 through 5 have been successfully picked up by the automatic tool changer. If you're using an additional tool rack, you'll repeat the process for tools 6 through 10. That concludes our setup of the automatic tool changer.